Hi, it's Amanda, and I just wanted to do a Bible study, and God bless you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am deciding to um, read today with you from the Psalms, and I will probably read through 31. That's and maybe a little bit more after that. I just absolutely love the Psalms. All of God's word is great, but I always find myself, um, at least it seems like every other day, going back to the Psalms because there's so many things in there that um, just are really speaking to me in these seasons of my life. So I wanted to go ahead and um, read that with you today. And if you're going to follow along, make sure it's the KJV and make sure it's not the NKJV or any other versions. I, I always feel to remind um, the brothers and sisters that as God always tells us we're one body, we're all different members, but with one body and that body is Jesus Christ. So we want to make sure that we are all on the same page, that we're all reading the same Bible and learning um, the same things through the Spirit when we study his word. So make sure you have a KJV and you're not missing anything that God has to say to you. So I will go ahead and start. So we'll go ahead and go to um, Psalm 31. So it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock, for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. So God cares so much for the brothers and sisters in Christ. And for those he's calling out to, if you happen to be listening to this and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ before, today's the day for salvation. So everybody needs a way to stand and be reconciled before a holy, blameless, wonderful God. And, and God said, I loved people so much that I sent my beloved son to die for the sins of mankind. So we have got to have a way to be made right before God and to become a part of his family. And when Jesus died on the cross, he gave his life. He shed his blood and took our place. All the dirty sins and all the bad things that people do. He said, I'm going to take their place because I love them. I'm laying my life down. Nobody took it. He gave it. So that's a gift. But but people have a choice while they're still on this side of eternity to choose it or or not. So if you feel that God is pulling on your heart and you want to you want to take part with um, the salvation plan that he's given to us, please do so, because that's definitely the Holy Ghost. That's God pulling on your heart. And he's saying, I want you to come to me through the cross. But um, we were actually reading and it says, let's see, I've hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. So God's like, God thinks of us so much. Like we think, you know, we have a lot of thoughts throughout one day or one hour or even one minute. Like we can't even imagine how many thoughts that God thinks toward us out of love. So he he considers the little things that we go through, the big things, and he can always make a way. So God, please help your people to trust you and to know you better. And to remember that you are with us. You don't miss a beat, that you know everything. And it says, I have hated them that regard my vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. And has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. So think of the enemy. He's like, you know, he just wants to destroy God's people. He just wants to get them. But God's like, I won't leave you in his hand. I'm not going to let him just crush you and, and keep you. And, and he's like, I will deliver you. He promises if we just stick with God, he's like, I'll set you free. And I will promote you through the challenges and, and the attacks of the enemy. So we just have to, as Christians, put up that shield of faith. How it talks about putting on the full armor of God. So you have your helmet of salvation, you have your breastplate of righteousness, you have the, um, the belt of truth, and you have the sword of the spirit, and you have the shield of faith. And that's what I was just discussing. And you also have the, um, 
the feet that are shod with the gospel of peace. So we want to make sure that we are putting on our armor because it is spiritual warfare. We do have an enemy, Satan, and we are to definitely stick tight with God and and practice those things, the sword of the spirit. That's why when you read the Bible or I read the Bible, you know, that's our sword. That's our main weapon is knowing, hey, I can tell lies from the truth because this is what God's word says. So you always can go back to God's word. And it says, let's see, and has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief. Yeah, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of my mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. So it's... It's knowing that God is omnipresent and he sees everything and and people are blessed when they when they put their trust in him and fear his name, knowing that he has the power to destroy both body and soul. And so people don't have that kind of power. Only God has that power. So it's it, it's to fear him. And that's the begin, beginning of wisdom and knowledge is acknowledging all of that, that God is ultimate. And it says that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath shewed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before, before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications. When I cried unto thee. So he hears us. I mean, there's there's scriptures that talk about how um, he even counts our tears and they're all in his bottle. So he has this bottle of tears. So that's how much God cares is um, God's not some distant, far away God you know, looking down on us. He's He's right there living inside of us. If we give our heart to him, he, we literally are the house of God. We are his dwelling. So he's that close. He's like right inside of us. So it's, it's important that we understand that. Um, he sees everything and he knows everything and he does care. Let's see. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath shewed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. So the Bible talks about be a doer, not just a hearer. And he's like, I'm going to reward you and just be faithful to me. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So that's something that my kids and I were actually talking about recently in, uh, in, um, the first chapter of Joshua, and God just keeps reminding, be strong, be courageous, and over and over, and be of good courage. And God, that's how God wants us to live, and that's something that um, we, we learn as we grow in our faith. So um, we definitely can trust God, and um, the more that we read his word, the more we can stand on his promises, because everything in this book is true, everything. So we can trust God. Um, people, situations, other things in life we can't trust, but we can trust God, the maker of it all. So 
that was what I was going to read with you today. And if anyone watching this has any prayer requests or questions or anything, anything at all, please feel free to inbox me. And also be sure to check out underneath um, the recording here. I would like to post my pastor's YouTube channel. So if you can check that out, please do it. There's awesome sermons on there and a lot of, lot of insight into God's word and what God is really saying. So um, again, if you have any questions or anything, and uh, be blessed and thank you for reading along with me. And again, make sure that you get yourself a KJV. So um, and be sure to check out for future uh, uploads and Bible studies. All right, be blessed.